Hi, my name is Kathleen Tseng, and I'm the owner and creative director of Sunny Kilogram. As is the case with almost everything on the web, there's more than one way to achieve an effect. Today, I'm going to show you one very simple way to create a bouncing Twitter icon using only CSS and HTML, no JavaScript required. Let's do this. You'll need a few things to create a bouncing Twitter icon. The first thing you'll need is obviously the icon itself, which I have here. I also have a few other ones. Um, you'll also need a CSS file and an HTML file. Let's open up the HTML in an editor. In the head, I have a reference to the external style sheet. And in the body, I have the actual Twitter icon, which is surrounded by an anchor tag that points to twitter.com and has a class called jump. Okay, now in the CSS, we're going to reference this jump anchor and we're going to utilize actually a very, very simple property called padding to create this bouncing effect. All right, so let's go ahead and set the top padding to eight pixels and the bottom padding to zero. This eight, number eight here, this is actually how high the bounce is. So you can play around with this number. And we need one more thing here. We need to set the display of this anchor to block. This is because inherently anchors are actually inline level elements that padding top and padding bottom can't really affect. All right, so by setting this display to block, um, the padding will actually work. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is to create um, what happens when we hover, hover over this anchor. So we're going to utilize the hover pseudo class, and then we're going to essentially reverse the padding values. Okay, so let's set the top padding to zero and the bottom padding to eight. Cool. Now let's take a look. Let's refresh that. And there we go. We actually have um, a, an, a bouncing effect, but it doesn't look very elegant, right? It's a little jerky. So let's change that by going back to our CSS and utilizing a CSS3 property called transitions. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm not, I'm not going to type everything out. Um, I'm going to paste this in, which I wrote a while ago. And transitions just change um, animation speed. Okay, and all this one is saying is um, set the duration and easing of this transition to 0 0.3 seconds. That's all it's saying. And these other um, property calls here are just to make sure that this transition works in all browsers, all right? And I think um, the icon can benefit from one more CSS3 property called box shadow. We're just going to add a little bit of shadow to this just to make it a little bit nicer, okay? And what this is saying is this first value here is for the horizontal shadow, which we're setting to zero. Um, the next one, you guessed it, vertical shadow, and we have set it to 10, okay? The next number here is for the blur, so how blurry this shadow is. And negative nine here is actually the spread, all right? And we're obviously setting the color of the shadow to gray. Now, what are we going to do when we hover over it? Well. Let's just copy this line here, paste that in, and I think we can keep everything the same except for the vertical shag shadow, okay? Because when we're when the icon actually bounces up, it's technically a little bit further away from, from the ground. So the shadow would actually probably be shorter. So I'm going to set that to six instead of 10, all right? Let's save that and go back to our browser and see if it's still, remember, before it was, you know, jagged, right? So let's refresh that and boom, already we have a little bit of shadow. So that makes it look a little bit nicer. And let's roll over now. It's a lot smoother and the shadow becomes a little bit smaller when we roll over. Great. And just for fun, let's add three more icons that I have in here to make it a little bit more complete. Refresh that. Cool, and now we have four icons 
that bounce on rollover and have shadows underneath them. And we did all this with just a few lines of CSS and no JavaScript. You can take these effects and really run with them. For example, play with the duration and easing of the transition. And the shadows that we created aren't really perfect, so those can really be improved as well. The takeaway is that the combination of CSS3 and HTML5 is incredibly powerful. And the best way to learn is to just get down and dirty and experiment yourself. Thanks for watching. I'm Kathleen Singh. Until next time, take care.